And then we have web, web dashboards. Uh, and again, we have many web dashboards available. And here, I just want to show you one of them. I want to show you the official dashboard for Kubernetes. Um, so there are multiple ways to deploy that dashboard. Uh, there is um, uh, the, the recommended method uh, is to run the dashboard as an internal service uh, and then connect to it with something like port forward. Now, to make things a little bit easier for us, I also have two other manifests for the dashboard. Uh, dashboard with token and dashboard insecure. Uh, as you can imagine, dashboard insecure is not recommended. Dashboard insecure would give us a dashboard with no authentication, you know, no password, no nothing. Anybody would be able to connect to the dashboard and uh, mess around with our cluster. So we don't want that. Instead, we're going to use dashboard with token, uh, which will require a token to connect to the dashboard. So we'll, we will see how to, how to do that. Okay, um, so that's... That's the one I want to use. Uh, so first, uh, I'm going to... Uh, why am I disconnected? Let me reconnect here. I probably got disconnected earlier, yes. Uh, all right, let's clean up all these things. Yeah, so I go to container training key ATS, the directory where I have all my YAML files. And I want dashboard recommended, all right, kubectl apply, dashboard recommended. Okay, great. Next, um, this is telling us that we need to uh, get the token. So how does that work? Well, if we connect to the dashboard, uh, Let's get the port for the dashboard. Uh, so the dashboard uh, here as, uh, whoops, sorry, that was supposed to be a node port. Uh, okay, let's make that a node port then, my bad. Did I use, yeah, dashboard recommended. Hmm. Uh, oh, okay, sorry, I got the wrong one. I got dashboard recommended, which is, more like locked down. So let's backtrack. Uh, I'm going to delete dashboard recommended and then I'm going to redeploy with dashboard with token. My bad. kubectl apply dashboard with token. There we go. Okay. Now I get the services here. Yes, now this is a node port. So I connect to any of the nodes of my cluster on the node port. Whoops. Uh, put that in my browser. Uh, oh, and that's supposed to be HTTPS. So when I connect here, since I have a self-signed TLS certificate, I get this warning page, but I'm like, no, it's fine. Uh, accept the risk and continue. All right, and now I need to authenticate. So I need to give the equivalent of a login and password to, to be able to access the dashboard. And the equivalent is going to be a token. Uh, and this is how we obtain the token. Uh, there is a little thing that's... Ta -da -da. Hmm, I thought I had, a, so sorry, there is a little bit of information that's missing from that slide and I, I remember updating it. So I wonder if I might have updated it in the wrong branch. Um, all right, let's, let's try this command uh, and let's see what happens. And so this is the command to obtain the token uh, for, uh, for, for the user of the dashboard. Except if I do that, it says, nope, not found. 
This is because of a change in the way that Kubernetes manages service account tokens. So this is a little bit annoying because we're going to talk about uh, airbag and service account tokens on Friday, uh, but we haven't talked about that yet. So, you know, I'm just uh, bringing up a lot of new names like tokens and service accounts and what is this about? Um, so in older version of Kubernetes, uh, you would automatically have this token like created for us. And so that command would have given us um, the, the token that we need. Um, but in newer versions of Kubernetes, we need to create the token manually and we do it like this, create token cluster admin that gives us a token and we put that token here and there we go now we are logged into the dashboard so this is a web dashboard but um, it's a very powerful web dashboard I think it's important to mention it because sometimes when we, you know, when if we compare the command line and the web dashboards, um, often the command line is much more powerful and the web dashboard just gives you a limited number of actions. But here you can do everything with that web dashboard. You can think of the web dashboard like a, it's like kubectl for web. So all the things that we can do with kubectl, we can also do them with the dashboard. Example, let's say I want to um, create a new deployment. Uh, so I click on plus and here I can put some YAML. Okay, not very convenient. I could upload some YAML uh, or I have a very convenient form, a little bit like kubectl create deployment. So let's say I want to create the red deployment with jpetadzo slash color three pods and I want an external service uh, on port 80 uh, and I do deploy. Okay, did I forget anything or? No, I think I hadn't clicked properly. Okay, uh, so now if I go to pods, um, I see that I have red pods that were just created like right now. Um, and if I go to services, yep, I have my red service that was created here. You can see that there is a node port like 32692. So I can go to my cluster address uh, 32692 and that gives me a red pod in the blue namespace. Yep, that's what we just created. Um, I can even go to, let's see, let's go back to my deployments, click on the red deployment. Uh, this is showing me the replica sets. I can click on the replica set. Then I can see the pods in the replica set. I can click on a pod. And once I'm on the pod here, I can view the logs of the pod or I can even get a shell in the pod. So as you can, as you can see, we can do a lot in that dashboard. Um, I can check like what's up with my nodes. Uh, you will see that we also have a little bit of metrics. So the dashboard is collecting metrics and showing them here. Uh, what else can we do here? And what's interesting to understand is that the permissions that I have here come from the token that I used. Here, this is a cluster admin token. So it's, a, it's a, the, the equivalent of root or administrator so I can do everything I want with that token. But if we wanted, we could also create an account with 
specific permissions, you know, oh, maybe you only have read-only access to the cluster, or maybe you have full access, but only to a specific namespace, or only you have access, but only to like one specific deployment. So I could create an account with these permissions and then have a token for that account and give the token to someone so that now they can connect to the dashboard and use that token uh, and have access to only a subset of the cluster and maybe it would be read-only. So that would be very convenient. Uh, for instance, um, if I have, a, let's say, a, a support team, you know, somebody who doesn't need like full-time, full access to the clusters, but regularly needs to check what's going on and you know, troubleshoot things. Um, so that would be pretty convenient for them.